Hello to the TLC meeting on 21st of May. Um, the first one after the Cloud Foundry Day, which happened in uh, New York last week uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, it was a great day with uh, awesome sessions. Uh, I think they will be available uh, in the next one, two weeks also uh, in YouTube, if someone missed that one. But now we have the TUC meeting and maybe we can talk later uh, about provide an update. So uh, the agenda is to go over the action items, uh, review our uh, PRs issues, um, RFCs, and then talk about any other business. So uh, action items from last week, uh, on our last meeting, it was two weeks ago. So I generated a number for the RFC, which we uh, approved. Uh, it was the one about uh, file-based uh, service binding information. And we had an action item here on Chris. Uh, it's about the discussion um, how to proceed with uh, the RFC uh, regarding uh, using uh, GitHub uh, for um, publishing uh, images. Uh, okay, there was another comment by uh, Tim. Like the last open thread, like proposing to, to close. It, right, like the, the RFC, but the one remaining uh, threat is the uh, like setting up Google Groups for our working groups. That's possible. I think that was being investigated by Chris. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can do that. Um, I mean, I, I'm quite confident we can do that, as we talked about, um, like we did with the FIPS working group, set it up like that. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think that's a good idea. How do we want to proceed with requesting these groups? Um, I mean, I guess let me, I should start with one group, perhaps the foundational infrastructure group, and then we can make sure that's all set up and, and working right. And then I can go down the list. But do we want uh, it per group or do we want it per area? I don't know. Because, like, for security right. purposes, is like fine grain. The more fine grained, the better, I would say. Yeah, right. And yes, we talked about how we could nest that, perhaps. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's, um, Ruben, why don't you and I meet and we'll, we'll, let's go through foundational infrastructure and try and set that up and make sure that's working right. And then, assuming that test case works fine, then we can, I can reach out to other working group leads and we can just kind of go through and get that set up for all the working groups that, I mean, is this something that we should we should set up proactively for all working groups or is this something that each working group should reach out to me for? Did you like look at the costs? Is there a cost association associated with this? For Google groups, I don't think so. I think that's, I think you can just set that up. Um, for adding new emails, that's, you know, $12 a month or something like that. But for, to create a group, I believe is free. So I don't think that there's gonna be any costs associated there. Or if they are, it's it's still minimal. But then if like the challenge is gonna be keeping it in sync, right? At some point. Um well it like things would, would be area changing. people leaving, right? Like if people leave an area or join an area, they should also be added to the group again. Yeah. So whenever, as part of onboarding for a new maintainer or a new working group lead, um, we would just add them to that. And then when they, you know, remembering to to remove them when they cycle off is probably trickier, but achievable. Um, mm. Yeah. Someone and like then we just, you know, like... sure. Please continue. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I agree. Let's let's close this, and I'll meet with Ruben. I'll find some time next week to meet with Ruben, and we'll, you know, 
to have a test run uh, as far as Google Groups uh, for project areas and working groups. Good. Sounds like we can close this issue then. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, I put a comment and uh, closed it. Um, so most probably as so how if that can be automated to you'll be better. Um, otherwise, uh, automating those those Google groups. Yeah, the removal or adding people, keeping them in sync. Yeah. Right. So as soon as you change it in the in the YAML in the community yeah. repo. Yeah, similar to the org automation, or maybe integrated in the org automation somehow. I don't know what is right. possible. Yeah, I mean, you just need to have a a bot that has admin access into the cloudfoundry.org Google suite, and I'm not sure how that works, but mm -hmm. it seems something that could that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but that, that could come after, right? Like first we approve of concept, and then we could automate it later. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we are done with the action item. Okay, job. Uh, so we can proceed then with uh, our um, PRs. First one is about uh, adding a new approval to the uh, docs working group. So uh, this was waiting for quite a long time. That's why I decided to add uh, the, this one to, so that we take a decision here. Because it works, uh, everything uh, looks good. Uh, adding Paul as uh, approval. Yeah, She's... I think Anita made the mistake of opening the PR herself, and she can't yeah. merge it. <laughs> yes. Because <that's fine. laughs> I do think she should be able to decide this on her own without us. Yes, uh, I know. Uh, uh... I thought about merging it for her, but I saw you commented, so I figured I'd wait. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Okay, then I think uh, let's merge. Okay, um, okay um, and the next one, uh, I already provided a uh, review here. I don't think yeah. we need, yeah. Thank you. Basically, uh, I suggested that the repositories are archived instead of uh, yeah. pulling them from the um, um, Cloud Foundry ammo, as discussed earlier. And this is about the elections, which are upcoming. Yeah, so I put that in. Um, I mean, I drafted this up um, a while ago, but I put this in as a pull request this morning. Um, I might have made a typo somewhere in there because there's a lots of YAML and dates and stuff, but it was pretty much copy paste from the last year's elections. Um, and this is just an, this is an Electo app that's running on on our any nines account, um, and it's it's pretty straightforward. I think we have this. I think we should have this under control. Eric Mom had previously been helping with this, and he did before he left. He did offer to help with this. Um, oh, okay. That's why I left him on as as a you know as an admin. But also, I mean, there's a question: Do we want the existing TOC members to be listed as admins? I don't think it matters all that much, right? This this is just administrative stuff. But um, him and Steve Greenberg um, had been kind of dealing with the app before. Um, I haven't heard back from Eric. He might be very busy with his new job. I don't know. Um, but, but you know, Steve and I can take care of this too. I think. So yes. yeah. seems like we should move on without him. Hmm. Yeah. Um, although if he wants to participate, that's lovely. Uh, 
Yeah, so um, I don't know if anyone wants to review the files changes or or we can just get this approved and then if something's not working, fix it. Uh, but once we get this pull request merged, then we should be able to trigger the Electo app to create those new elections. And then tomorrow, or maybe Thursday at the latest, um, I can um, notify via CF Dev, Dev and uh, in Slack channels and let everyone know that the elections are on. And um, yeah, Ruben and Bayon, thank you for two years of service on the QSC. Time is almost up, unless you are you are welcome to run again. Um, that's entirely up to you and or your companies. But um, yeah, so uh, you, what's that? The suspense. Yeah, so. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah, the the, the cadence they are going to announce. Let's take a look what, what the exact dates were. I'll up to that real quick. Um, How are the uh, voters uh, list generated? Oh, through the through LFX, like the community management insights data. So basically, I got I, I couldn't self serve that. They asked me to sell. I told them like they wasn't giving me the GitHub username, so I put in a ticket with LFIT, and they gave me a list of basically everyone that had any measurable contribution to. Well, for for the TOC, it's all Cloud Foundry projects, including Paketo. For Paketo, it's just Paketo build packs GitHub org. So if you have, have contributions and then yeah. for these lists, I list the entire thing. It does say in the charter, actually, like for Paquetto, I believe it's 10 and for the TOC, it's 25. So, and I might've been a little more generous on the TOC and gone to 10 because the, everyone, everyone who's got a measurable contribution is eligible to vote. Um, and so these lists are, I believe it's, for both lists, I believe I generated everyone with 10 or more measurable contributions in the last 12 months. And I went through and tried to remove four duplicates, though there might be a duplicate or two that stuck past me. Hopefully no one abuses that and votes twice. I don't think that's a high risk. <laughs> no. What does it mean to be an election officer? It just means you can go into the app and administer it. And then you can, I think you can see how the results are going in real time. So it's not really that important for the actual election. It's really more the administration of the application running the election. <clears throat> but um, yeah, and there's the, the one thing that I think this pull request does not take care of is there's there might be some templates that need to be updated. Uh, I, I I actually added the templates back, uh, so I, I added a commit here, which oh very nice, thank you. Because uh, at some point I moved them uh, to another place so that we don't have the templates active when I right. have elections, and now I, I, I added them back with. That was that was oh. fast. Nice work. But maybe they need to be updated. Or, I don't know. I think they are generic enough. Yeah, I, I mean, if there's a date in the title somewhere or something like that, then yeah. they should be updated. But other otherwise, I mean, should the same name is what we want. Yeah, and it doesn't look like there's at least looking at the, that screen. Um, doesn't look like there are dates in. It, but. I can open one of them request for election to see No, they don't have dates or anything. I think they look yeah, fine. So they should work. So okay. I think, yeah, I think I've got this set up without, you know, any egregious errors, but um, it's possible I've got a typo someplace or, or somewhere. Um, but um, I think we should. Yeah, they look fine. Yeah. Go, go ahead and get this merged and then we can. Um, I'll work with Steve right. to go ahead and trigger the election. If any of you want to be like more involved in that and have in like input into the app itself, um, I think that's a good thing. Um, or Steve and I can just run it, or maybe Eric wants to pop in and for old time's sakes and nostalgia's sake <laughs> contribute. Uh, I don't know. So regarding uh, Eric. Um, what 
zo doe je leef. Oh, nu. I mean, I, I think may as well leave him in there um, and then maybe add one of you. Um, if, any, if one of you wants to be more involved in this or or not. I mean, maybe as TOC members, you don't want to be involved in this. Although Eric. But all the uh, uh, all the TOC member, members are uh, mentioned here, selection officers. Oh, yeah. OK, good. Then. <laughs> yeah, let's let's leave Eric and keep all of you in. Um, although, if if some of you are up for re-election, perhaps the people that are up for re-election should not be. <laughs> Someone's question of the right. No, no we are, all, all they're the, they're removed. They're, they're not there. Yeah, they're, I did no okay. notice. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, no Ruben or Behan as administrator yes. in the election that they theoretically could run in. Sounds fair. Um, okay. I'm fine to leave it with a bin. Cool, cool. So you're saying we should bribe Eric? <laughs> like if we want to, okay. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, right. the, the, the election administrators cannot meaningfully impact the election. They can change the dates of it, the things like that, but they cannot add votes. <laughs> it's in okay well i will um after this call i will check to see if the what i need to do to tr trigger i forget exactly what you have to do to trigger the election i believe there's a there's a uh, config variable that needs to be added to the app and then that'll see these new files and trigger the creation of the election and then it should be all set basically Okay, um, then we can go to the RFC section. Um, we have one active. Oh, they're they're already they're already live in the app. I needed to do nothing, so it looks like right now the 2024 TOC and Paquetta Bill Pack Steering Committee elections are live on elections.cloudfoundry.org. Wow! So just a matter of <laughs> testing those those um the templates and, and things like that, but I, I think we're good here. This was fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Amelia provided feedback here for the RFC. Um, it's just a little naming though. Yeah. There's not so much here. If you want to to start the final comment period, or if you want to give more time. Ruben, Chris, how do you, did you have time to look? Yeah, I looked at it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, naming is hard. I had to mm. say, but I, I mean. And naming has a history. Yeah. <laughs> the other, because the, these terms, life cycle, et cetera, they exist already. So it's yeah. difficult to change and, uh, uh, yeah, I also felt like, yeah, CSB classic, like what's going to be the next type? Like, I, but I mean, still, I think I don't have a better answer. So, well, or we can make it life cycle in both places. I just don't like it type in one place and life cycle in the other. Yeah, consistency is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can't uh, change the API anymore. It's oh, is it already in, in there? Yeah, since long time. <laughs> oh, this breaks my heart. Okay, well. Hmm. Should we start the final comment period or do you need to... I think it's fine. Naming is yucky, but I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. It's too late to change. Yeah. I think it's fine as well.
Next Tuesday will be Ah, yeah, so the build pack um, type does not exist yet, but it is in fact a build pack type. It is not a life cycle. <laughs> it's different entities. That's uh, where it comes from. I just regret it. So, um, yeah. Let's say if in the implementation somebody comes up with better names, I would be happy, but I'm afraid <laughs> that won't happen. <laughs> Okay. Uh, if someone uh, has suggestions, uh, I, was, I was wondering if if we are interested in uh, making the uh, the default lifecycle like a platform wide configurable thing, but maybe that could be like later. But like, say CSBs are wildly successful, and at some point you want to make the default CF push behavior change. Might be what it, but that could also be. It's a bit early, I would say, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, at the moment, you add a new uh, thing that you can explicitly configure, and uh, then I think this can be done later to add additional configuration variables that allow to change uh, the defaults uh, if that is sorted out and everybody agrees. Mm. Yeah, except for like. You would need the CLI to check, like the CLI needs to check with the platform, to figure out what the default is, right? And like getting that in now makes it easier to adopt it. Like, I don't know, we are always lagging a bit with our customers. So hmm. if this would be in from the start. That would be useful to have. Yeah, definitely something that can you publish like in the V2 info endpoint or something like that. So the client knows when it does its initial connection, what the state of the platform is. But I can leave a comment about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's anyway, a non-backwards compatible uh, behavior. So it could be interview source later, you know, but yeah, it's a good point that uh, If you have a CLI version that supports cloud native build packs, and then you also have a later CLI version that supports checking for the defaults, like that's yeah. not great, right? Ideally, you have that from the start um, so that you have control mm -hmm. over it because, like, you have no way of forcing people to update their CLIs. Um, Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you can. I will leave it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that you can kind of slightly make a forcing function by enabling that functionality in a new major version of the CLI. So V9 of the CLI is cloud native enabled. You want cloud native enabled, you got to go to version nine of the CLI. <laughs> yeah. It didn't work out in the past very well. I mean, we, we still see people using CF6. Uh, True. And uh, I think we recently enabled uh, a feature that uh, prints out warnings uh, in the CLI if your version is too old. At least that spoils you a bit. But if it helps, we will see. At the end of the day, you have to break something if you want to get rid of it. So it's a hard way. <laughs> Yeah, and with this life cycle and type, I mean, on the CLI, it looks like there are three life cycles, uh, classic build packs, CNB and Docker, which are the three major things while it has to be translated to the cloud controller API to, into two life cycles. One is a build pack life cycle with two build pack types and the other one is a Docker life cycle. Yeah, because of history and existing design and architecture. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, please leave the comments here so we have mm -hmm. 
discussion in the RFC. Okay, uh, then uh, regarding issues, we don't have any new. Uh, we can go to the to any other business. So see if they is... Yeah. Um, thank you to everybody who uh, attended or spoke at or tuned in remotely for Cloud Foundry Day uh, New York last Wednesday. It was a great event. Um, yeah, I thought it, the lineup was really strong. I think everyone had a nice time. And uh, yeah, it was nice. That was our first standalone event ever. It was our first Cloud Foundry event in New York ever and our first standalone Cloud Foundry Day in North America since the pandemic. Um, so it was great to get have that go off without a hitch. Um, and we will be, I, th I believe the videos will be ready tomorrow, actually. So I will announce that once all the session videos are up on YouTube. I think that's tomorrow. Um, we'll also be uh, promoting in earnest Cloud Foundry Day Germany, um, which will be October 9th. Uh, the CFP is already open for that. Uh, the event webpage is live. Sponsorships are open. Uh, but we haven't really been talking about it too much because you know we we're focused on Cloud Foundry Day North America. So um, you can expect announcements about that this week. Uh, but the CFP is open. You can go find it online and put in a talk already. A few people already have. I think we've already got a sponsor. So it's uh, that's uh, that's moving along. Um, and the CFP, I believe, is open until sometime in July. But um, but again, we'll announce all of this. I think tomorrow or Thursday in earnest. You'll see. It in email and on all the Slack channels and things like that. Yeah. And I think we've already covered TSC elections. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, regarding CFF cloud fair DNS. Yeah, um, we're in the process of moving Bosch IO over. Um, but DNS is managed via Cloudflare, and we're also using that for a bit of DDoS protection. Um, so we were wondering if there's a similar solution managed or provided by the CFF. Um, and the short answer, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I've got uh, Steve Greenberg managing some things uh, via Any9s, and then LFIT manages DNS uh, for all of our um, all of our domains. Some of those have records that point to VMware Broadcom infrastructure, and they've mm -hmm. traditionally handled some of those things. But now that we're moving those over, um, you know, uh, I guess there, there's a, probably a number of solutions here. But I could, I see another thread here. I you know you pinged me about this last week, Ruben, and I'm working through a backlog of Slack requests right now. But uh, maybe I also see a, a thread in app runtime interfaces between. Tim Downey and Steve about this same topic. Yeah. Um, so there's also an internal protocol thread that I'm involved in. So okay, like, right. Um, all the same stuff. Should we, should we set up a call about this with Tim and Steve and you and I? Sure. I'm trying to figure this. Out. Okay. I'm gonna. I, I'm. I'm actually off on Thursday, Friday this week, so I'll set that up for next week. Right. Yep. And I think cool. that, uh, like, if there's nothing. Like pre no pre existing stuff like uh the the discussion we had around the uh, Google groups yep. might prove handy right like if we want to set up a new Cloudflare account right we could could set it up with such a uh, Google yep. group domain or uh, email okay well I will set up a call with you early next week to talk about Google groups and then I'll set up a call with Steve and Tim and you slightly after that to talk about DNS. That works. Fabulous. Okay. Um, do you need any action items? So it's fine. Yeah. Um, um, let's skip the action items. Um, is there anything else? No, then uh, we are done uh, for today.
next, I will start with organizing the working group updates again, uh, starting uh, by next week. So the next one should be at runtime interfaces. Maybe Stefan, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yep. I guess I can do it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I can ask in Slack you and uh, Greg. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Greg is yeah. back, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why you can agree who wants, maybe both of you mm -hmm. want. Uh, yeah, there. Okay. Then uh, see you next week. Take care. Bye bye. bye. See you.